Moore Park, population then about 3,000. Not much by today's standards, but then enough to merit a one-hour special program by America's first genuine star of television news. The Susanna reactor started producing power early in November, and our cameras were focused on the town at 7.30 p.m. November 12, 1957, when for the first time in the United States, an entire community was illuminated by electricity generated by an atomic reactor. Enrico Fermi once looked at a reactor and said, wouldn't it be wonderful if it could cure the common cold? Here at Moore Park, a chain reaction that started with him, washed the dishes and lit a book for a small boy to read. But less than two years after that dramatic send-off, something went wrong. Some of the fuel rods partially melted. Unit 4 has obtained these retouched photographs and drawings of the damaged reactor core, pictures of the first fuel melting accident in a commercially producing nuclear power plant. The reactor was located 35 miles from downtown Los Angeles. It was called the Sodium Reactor Experiment, or SRE, built for the government by Atomics International. It began operating in 1957. The accident happened in 1959. The SRE's most troublesome run began July 12, 1959. By the next day, the power was rising for no apparent reason. The control rods failed to stop it. The reactor failed to shut itself down, so it was stopped or scrammed by hand. Reports show the operators did not know what was wrong, but that somehow they decided the power excursion had not affected the reactor adversely. So they started it up again. That would be unheard of in today's safety atmosphere. What does it mean? What were the potentialities there? Well, there were a lot of things that they didn't know about uh, what had caused the power excursion. They were measuring high radiation uh, release uh, levels within the uh, reactor building, and they didn't know why uh, that release was occurring. And essentially, they didn't know what the reactor core condition was, but for some reason, they felt they needed to get back in operation. The reactor continued to run for another two weeks, even though there was more trouble. It was shut down repeatedly for various reasons, including buildups of radioactivity in the building above the reactor. That's what led to the final shutdown 13 days after the first signs of trouble. On the uh, 59 re reactor meltdown, I was there. I was 19 years old at the time. I worked for, uh, at Atomics International from uh, January the 5th to November the 9th of 1959. That's uh, uh, the period of time that I worked there. But that was a critical time. That's when everything happened. So I was there at a, at a moment where I had the opportunity to experience all these things firsthand. <clears throat> what you got here on this slide here, this picture, is uh, the reactor. Many people have seen this uh, scene, been shown around so many times. But what I want to show you on this uh, particular picture real quick is the reactor building, you see there's no containment building. And that's the way they was built back in 1959. It was an experimental reactor, and it wasn't required to have a containment building. And uh, let's see the next thing here. We get on here, here's a picture inside of the, the reactor building. A lot of people have probably never seen inside the, the SRE reactor. This uh, is a very a large building. You see there, uh, right there, if you, know, if you don't know what a, rea a reactor looks like, look at the bottom of the, the picture there you with a man kneeling down. That's what a re uh, nuclear reactor looks like. And the uh, equipment that's uh, right there in the middle there is a, a fuel, uh, ha uh, handles fuel elements and carries them back and forth to the reactor to the to storage area. Now here's a picture of me. I finally I finally got in there. This is when I was 20 years old. It was about a month before the the accident happened. I was uh, hired to be a uh, uh, trainee as far as uh, in, uh, learning how to run a reactor, and that was one of my lesson days that the, my supervisor took a picture of me so I could have one to take home. But you can see it uh, looks pretty complicated with all the gauges and the charts and. I had to learn how to read all those at one time. Now here is, uh, see, wait a minute, I got too ahead of myself. Okay, now it's, what I like to do is talk about 
the actual day of the meltdown, or as people call it, or power uh, uh, surge, or uh, nuclear action. A lot of ways you can call it there. A lot of different names you can. But anyways, this control room I'm showing you a picture here of is uh, where I come to work on my shift. And I come walking through the door. You see a door in the picture. That isn't the door. It's the opposite end. looks just like it. I come to work on my shift. I didn't think anything was wrong. I want to, uh, just like an, a, a, a regular shift, and I come through that door, and then there I looked. Uh, as I come through the door, I said, uh-oh, something's not right here. This, uh, there's, there's something going on that I don't know about. Am I supposed to be here? All these questions run through my mind. Close the door real quietly so I wouldn't disturb. But around that uh, console, they call it, there where I'm setting that, there was men all lined up around that console. They were on my shift, and uh, there were three men at this uh, behind where I'm sitting there talking to all those men, and they started, they was discussing what happened on the nuclear accident. As I stood there and listened, it just scared me to death to hear what they was talking about because of the, uh, that's the worst thing can happen to, uh, uh, to somebody's uh, computer operator like I'm doing sitting there to have a have power uh, sc uh, sc uh, they'll have a nuclear accident I just do it that way I can't remember the name they called it there but huh power excursion, power excursion. there is my helper there excuse me <laughs> he he knows it too so but I just but anyway I won't waste time on that but anyway I was talking to him and and I heard about how the they barely shut the reactor down. The reactor had run away on them. They, they had, the reactor has an automatic uh, shutdown on them. Uh, that didn't work. And then they finally had to dry, uh, do it mechanically, put the, the, the power uh, control rods to, down in the reactor all the way, trying to stop and still wouldn't stop. And, and this went on for quite a while that, that afternoon. It happened in the afternoon when they first noticed the reactor running away. And uh, uh, then they decided, what are we gonna do now? They're, they're at a loss, they, they can't stop it. Things getting worse and getting hotter and quacker. Every few seconds it would double, triple the, the heat in the reactor. So the only thing they had left to do was be able to take and uh, release the gases out of the, out of the reactor core. So this is the part I wanna let everybody know about their stories about they had the tanks to take and release the, the gases into, but what happened is uh, during that day when they was trying to shut the reactor down, those tanks, those storage tanks uh, were got, gotten filled up with trying to stop the reactor, to, and there they were, they had the tanks full, everything was, they couldn't do anything, what do we do now? If we don't shut something down, it's gonna blow up. And I was there to listen to all that was going on. And so what they had to do, they had to release the, the, uh, re, uh, the nuclear radiation straight out of the reactor, out in the atmosphere. This has not been talked about, but I was there and I know it happened. It went out over the San Fernando Valley, went over the eastern end of Sami Valley. The winds were blowing in that direction. This might be a surprise to many out there, but that's what actually happened. So, uh, when I, while I was standing there, and he was talking about the, the, the person the, that uh, uh, Marvin J. Fox, he was the director over the reactor, he was there. He was one of the key people that was there talking to the men, turned around and seen me standing be, behind him, and, and he realized somebody was behind him. And, and, uh, and realize, uh, and then he asked uh, the men behind the council, who am I, who is that guy there? And my supervisor went and told him that, that I was on, the, on their crew. And, and so to, to, to get the tension away from me, my uh, supervisor put me in charge of taping up the big double doors in the, in the control room that went out into the high bay area to, to get, the, uh, get, get, get him off the, get me off his mind, you know, the, the Marvin J. Fox's nine there. So anyways, he went back to talking to the, to the men, 
When he, and then the men asked him, can we tell our families about it? Can we tell it? It went right over our own homes. We live in Chatsworth, Canoga Park, all those areas. Can we let our wives know the, what had happened? And the, and the three uh, men got together and uh, talked about it. And they come back to him and says, no, you cannot. No, I want anybody saying a word about it. We'll report what happened to the public in our own due time. And then he turned around and come over to me where I'm standing there taping up the door and all that. And he looked, got, it, got right up next to me like a, a sergeant in the military right in my face and says, you will not say a word about what happened here today. And, and he really got stern about it and scared me half to death. Uh, in the fashion he had done that. So here I am talking to you right now. I was not supposed to say a word. And this is, is something I have to say to all of you. It was something very important. <clears throat> Just to give me a second. Important to me to be able to let you know what actually happened. It's been with me 55 years. I've known this, but I, this is my first opportunity to let this known. And it's always been said in other directions, and I'm not going to go into all that by other people. <clears throat> so I should have had that on this picture here on Marvin Fox. I was, I was interested in what I was saying. I just forgot. But this is who the, uh, was the ch uh, in charge of the SRE reactor Marvin Fox, the one that talked to us and told us we couldn't say anything. Now, what they did, I want to just say real quickly, a lot of you know about a newspaper article that came out in the newspaper and said that what had happened was about a month later, and they brought it out, and it's a lot different than what I just told you. So it gives you an idea what, uh, uh, what they were thinking when they put that article in the paper. This here is a, a picture of the weather station. I happened to be the one that was on my crew that overseen the weather and see which way the wind was blowing on my own crew. And the, I'm showing you a, a picture here, the stairway going up the mountain there. It says weather station on, on the top right there. You can see it in that picture okay. So uh, I being a weatherman, I know which way the wind was blowing at that time. So. Uh, and I can swear to you that that was correct, what the direction I told you. Now here's a picture of me working on the, on the sodium pump. The sodium pump is what turned out to be the cause of the nuclear accident. This is me working on it, finishing it up, putting clear on the pump on the, over the asbestos. And that's not a very safe thing to do, messing with asbestos. But, but that's uh, the pump there that caused the accident. So now you can say you've seen what the pump looks like. Now I want to get into, I'm going to leave it on this picture here for a minute or two. Now during the, after the accident was, after the, um, the three high, highest in the command at, the, uh, at Atomics International left, the control room for the left, they, Marvin J. Fox said, I want you guys to take and start, restart the reactor up. We want to find out what caused the reactor to go down. And so he gave us an assignment that we had to restart the reactor. And it was a very scary thing. I was on that crew. I was right there. I did, uh, and I was part of the crew that restarted it. And the reason he wanted to restart it was to find out what caused it, like I'd said. So what they done, they took for two weeks, like it's been advertised, been said for, you've heard it a hundred times maybe, uh, Ran it. Why did we start it and do all this? It was a very foolish thing. We was told to do it by the boss man. He was he over, and we uh, went by what we was told to do, and we scared us to death. We started up and it ran. What they do every 24 hours, roughly, they would take and uh, shut down the reactor and then restart it again until they figured out for sure that it was that pump that was the cause of it. And every time they shut the reactor down, more radiation was released from the reactor at, uh, out in the atmosphere. It could have been uh, towards Samee Valley, could have been towards Topanga Canyon, it could be 
Uh, I can't tell you which way it went, but it, each time they had to release, release uh, radiation. And now this uh, picture here that I got, we're looking at right here, is an open door. Now where this tall piece of equipment is right there is where the reactor sit. And then we, as we was working on the reactor, we had to have the door open to let the radiation out. The radiation was high enough that, the, that we had to get it out of the building as much as we could to be able to work in there. So that's what, uh, what went on for those two weeks, open, that door open, and, and, uh, and when he stopped and starting the, re, uh, the reactor, and then afterwards, uh, the door was left open. The filters in the building on top were so uh, contaminated, they, they, were, they lost their usefulness. <clears throat> now here's a picture also that you see up at the top. It shows the arrow, uh, air filters on top, and that's what I'm speaking of, the air filters on top of the building. That's the, the building. And then and up on the hill, uh, at the left lower part, there's his holding tanks. That's where those four holding tanks where they put, they release the, the radiation into when they, when they shut down the reactor. And then you got in the center there the stack. The stack is what uh, when you uh, when you oops something changed there. I'll go back again. But anyway, that stack is where they release the radiation out uh, when the when the holding tanks uh, uh, set long enough to the radiation in, so it was safe to let uh, it was de degrading in those tanks. So. So that they felt was safe enough to let it out of the tanks to go out that stack. But that's the stack where we released it to go out at the time of the reactor uh, meltdown. <clears throat> now there's another picture of me here uh, on top of the reactor with my supervisor next to me. We're lining up some equipment. It was that equipment you've seen in the last picture there. And on top of that reactor, you see all those holes there. That's where the fuel elements would go down in the reactor. And those uh, holes there, some were, had lead blocks on them. Others had uh, uh, fuel elements. Well, the fuel elements are all out of them. They just, uh, we had, uh, they had caps on them. Or this, but the, what, uh, on those holes, they had O-rings around those holes, and they were leaking. And I had a, a radiation coming up on me and my supervisor while he's lining that equipment up. So he's always continually getting radiation uh, bombardments there. Now you see behind me there, there's plastic on the floor. That plastic is from when we cleaned the floor uh, from contamination, it got so bad, we'd lay plastic down uh, to cover up the rest of the contamination that we couldn't uh, get off the floor. And then we'd take and change that plastic every so often and throw it out in the back. Now here we got a spot here. Uh, we're cutting the core uh, around the, the reactor top here. This is the seal around the, the, uh, the core of the reactor. It keeps the radiation from leaking out. We had to cut that because they wanted to get the small pieces out of the, out of the reactor. Uh, so this is what it looks like from the top here on this where, where we're rotating the reactor. The spoke wheel on there is uh, we had to lift it up with a crane, a big old huge crane in the building. After we cut the seal, we, had, we took a crane, put the spoke wheel on it, and we lifted it up about three or four inches so it, we could be able to turn, uh, so we could use that big large plug right there, that large plug right there. We had to have it in the right spot to get the broken pieces of uh, fuel elements out as well as the fuel slugs. There was 81 fuel slugs that was dropped in the bottom of the reactor from all the broken fuel rods or fuel elements there that we had to get out. So we had to do that six or seven times before we got, got all those out and all us minutes in that picture got exposed to radiation coming out from around the edge of it as well as in the center there. Now here's another picture of me where I'm got to have a come along there with another man we're pulling on to rotate the, the reactor. Here's in the background here uh, it was plastic behind again. That's why I had that picture there to show you how extensive the plastic was. Everything was just covered with radiation in the building. And we had to do that to be able to, to work under those conditions. 
I've probably gone too long, haven't I? Or am I doing okay? Three more minutes. Boy, I did and then we'll do, thought. Then we got more to talk about. Oh, I know, but I just say, whew, I try and get it done quick because I know they have other things going. But anyway, there's a, this is an interesting one here. Everybody's, some people have heard about the trash pile we had out in the back of the, of the reactor. This is a picture of it right here. Nobody knows that it was there. I hadn't be, been there. I was able to take, catch this picture at the right moment. We had out there, it was about 15 feet high, and all that plastic I showed you was out there. It was all covered with radiation. We had, we had uh, furniture from the offices out there where Bonnie used to work in. Those, at the whole building at one time got contaminated from breaking the fuel rod element off in the, in the reactor and, and contaminated the whole complete building. We couldn't even get around the building for about almost two miles around the building, and all that Furniture from the offices went right out in the back of that, in that pile there, and records too. Records are hard to find. That's where they are. They went right there, and they got thrown away. So that's a that's a very important spot there, and all that was out in the open. It could be uh, out to the atmosphere, and it was leaking out radiation at that time. So this is where I'm going to end my my talk right here on the trash pile, and I thank everybody for taking a minute to to listen to what I had to say.